previously on Darker Things. So in the spirit of wanting to help find the killers, Victoria Hutchison, whose son was close to two of the murdered boys, comes forward to Memphis Police Detective Donald Bray. When her son was asked if he knew of anything that could help the case, he spun a tale of witchcraft and secret meetings. Then Bray asked Hutchison if she knew anything about what her son was talking about. She claimed she did not know, but would be willing to play detective. But she knew Jesse Miskelly, who seemed to be friends with Damien Apples and Jason Baldwin. She then flirted with Jesse Miskelly and enlisted his help in setting up a meeting with Damien Apples and Jason Baldwin, where she would then attempt to secretly record the two boys and get them to confess to the murders of the three young children. The tape she produced would prove to be useless in pointing the fingers at Damien Apples and Jason Baldwin. She then told Donald Bray that she had also attended an EBA, a secret sexual satanic ritual, with Damien Apples, Jason Baldwin, and Jason Muscali. Damien invite you to some meeting? He did. A cult satanic meeting. And now we present the West Memphis Three Unveiled Part 2, The Vicky Problem. I got a phone call from a lawyer in Fayetteville who had Vicki Hutchison sitting at her desk. Victoria, would you raise your right hand, please? Said she's ready to recant her trial testimony. Took back, and then these kids took their clothes off, and I looked at Damien. I said, I want to leave. I testified to it, but I lied on the stand. Today, we dive deep into the perplexing twist and turns of the West Memphis Three case, focusing on a key figure whose statements would leave an indelible mark on the investigation. Enter Victoria Hutchison. Join me as we unravel the Vicky problem. The West Memphis Three case captivated the nation, but amid the chaos, one individual's ever-changing testimony stood out. Victoria Hutchison. From her initial contact with the police to the shocking claims of satanic rituals, Vicky's role in this tale is truly extraordinary. When she agreed to play detective, she became the key person to connect the three murdered second grade boys to Jesse Muskelly Jr., Jason Baldwin, and Damien Apples. Her claims to have been an eyewitness to an EBOT, with Apples and Baldwin in attendance, are what led the police to initially question Jesse Muskelly Jr. And it can be argued that eventually led to Miss Kelly Jr.'s own forced or coerced confession. Vicky's journey began with conflicting reasons for approaching the police. Was it a genuine desire for justice, or did external factors play a role? The early inconsistencies in her statements set the stage for a convoluted narrative. First, she would have us believe she was coerced. Then she was a concerned citizen and wanted her son to help law enforcement find his two closest friends. Then she spun a tale that she was extorted by law enforcement to implicate the Memphis Three, or that authorities would find a way to pin the murders on her, and she would lose the custody of her son Aaron. And finally, she shared in 2023 that her son was a witness to horrific events but led up to the death of his two best friends, Chris Byers and Martha Moore, as well as Stevie Brad. That Aaron knew that John Michael Byers, the stepfather to Chris Byers, and Terry Hobbs, the stepfather to Stevie Birch, were involved in the slings of the three second-grade boys. Vicky's narrative takes a sharp turn as she points the finger at Byers and Hobbs, what led to this drastic change and how did it impact the investigation's trajectory? And if it's true, and in a disturbing twist, Vicky's claims her son aired witness abuse on that tragic day in 1993, what are the four reaching implications of this revelation and its potential impact on the larger narrative? Vicky's tale grows more complex as she continues to change her story. I was just a big liar, and I really was just a big liar. So what year was it that you moved to West Memphis? 92. So it's like one year before the actual murders. Okay. Um, so why did you guys move to West Memphis? Um, I met Charles Anthony Anderson. He was from West Memphis, Arkansas. I met him in Springdale, Arkansas. That's, he was working down there, and um, we became engaged 
and we're gonna get married. And he was from West Memphis, and we went to his hometown of West Memphis, Arkansas. Oh, so he had family in West Memphis. Yes, he did. His mom and sister and two brothers. Got it. So you're engaged to Charles Anthony Anderson. You're gonna live together. We rented our own place. Oh, that's right. You guys were renting the house that you were staying at. On East Barton. Okay, and you were neighbors. Were you living closer to the buyers or the moor? I lived two houses down from um, Mark and Melissa Byers and been across the street from Mark and Melissa were the Moors. And I had a son, Aaron, who was eight also. Okay, so your son, Aaron, Crip, Michael Moore, and Stevie were all the same age, basically. All in the same grade. And then Scott, who was 10, and um, Scott became good friends with Ryan and Dawn Moore, uh -huh. which was Michael's sister and Christopher's Michael's. brother. So Michael's older sister, right? Then Aaron became good friends with Christopher and Michael. Oh, and because everybody lived so close together, it was the same grade, they became friends really fast. It was really quick because um, they, he, they went to Weaver and um, Michael and no, Christopher and Aaron were in the same classroom. So they became fast buddies and buddies outside of school as well? Uh, they hung out constantly. We, the house that we lived in had a shed in the back and um, they, were, they were very mischievous. They all had um, ADD, they had been diagnosed with ADD and were just really bad kids, okay? And not real bad like that, but just mischievous just, yeah, troublemakers. Yeah. And um, they took cans of spray paint my shed and spray painted it all different colors. Draws the value spill at tea, so when was that? When did they do all that? Um, probably they had joined Cub Scouts uh, right after they started school. I'm not sure on that. Oh, okay, so that would have been them joining Scouts a little less than a year before the murders. But Todd Moore okay. was their Cub Scout dad. He was the big guy, and then Dana, Diana Moore, his wife, and I were um, Cub Scout moms. So we pretty much um, all were, we were the Cub Scout gang. Now I remember being at Cub Scouts, it was a great time for me, and my mom was actually a den mother. So like, what did you do as a Cub Scout mom? We would go to all the meetings. Oh, so you became good friends with Diana. Yeah, Dana Moore was like my very best friend. Now, before I start diagramming, before I try and keep all these names straight, is her name Diana or Dana? Her name is Diana, but everybody called her Dana. You guys were really good friends and used to go to the Cub Scout meeting. Like, what would you guys do in these uh, Cub Scout meetings? Todd basically ran them, and um, they worked for their little badges. Todd ran the meeting, and as moms, we just kind of sat there and oversaw the boys. And, but they always let us know when they were having a meeting. Just kind of hung out, you know, talked, and you know, it was just really fun to be around all the boys. Well, let's see, there's you, Dana, Todd. Like, who else was there? Is it like, did these parents go to the meetings or did like the Flyers boys' parents go to the meeting? Uh, Christopher's parents did not go to the meetings, no. I don't ever remember seeing them there. I think Pam had, Pam has gone before, but she had to work at night. Oh, right, right. She had the job at the uh, Catfish restaurant, right? Hello. Thank you once again for joining us here at Darker Things. If you liked what you saw today, if you want to get more content, we encourage you to hit that subscribe button, the notification bell, so that you get all the notifications about entering the dump. That's about all we have left for today, but if you come back for the next episode, I promise you more intrigue here with the interview with Victoria Hutchison. Hey guys, we'd like to know, you think Victoria Hudson was problematic? Is she the victim or the victimizer? Let us know in the comments below. We want to hear from you. As always, I'm your host, Doug Duncan, here to remind you that once you enter the dump, you may never be the same.